What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another rad movie review. Today we're going to talk about Insidious Chapter 3, which is in fact the first prequel in this franchise. Yes, we have Insidious The Last Key after this, which are both prequels to Insidious and Insidious Chapter 2. So I know it gets kind of confusing, it's like, why is this one called Chapter 3? But you know, just roll with it, just roll with it. So today you're going to hear my positives, the negatives, and the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Insidious Chapter 3 is from 2015, and this is the first film that's purely just written and directed by Lee Wannell, and this one focuses on our main character, Quinn, who after trying to contact her mother on the other side using, you know, spiritual witch boards and stuff like that, she ends up speaking and awakening some other kind of entity on the other side that starts to communicate with her, and then she has to call upon Elise, you know, Lynn Shay, the fabulous Lynn Shay is back, and she ends up meeting, you know, Specs and Tucker in this film. So that's kind of the prequel nature of this film is it's giving you the history and kind of more background on her character by having, you know, Quinn and a story for her to investigate as well. So let's get into the positives right away is that Lynn Shay as Elise is a tour de force. Like she is fantastic. This is easily going to go down as one of her greatest characters that she's ever played. Like when her career is all said and done people are going to remember Lynn Shay, and then the Insidious franchise is basically on her back. Like, she carries this franchise on her back, and it, she, she deserves it because she's a fantastic actress, and like I said, this is easily one of the greatest characters that she's ever portrayed in cinema. Another thing about this film that I do enjoy is that it actually has some creepy nature to it, has some scary moments and some atmospheric moments, and be it that this is 2015, we've already got, you know, Poltergeist remake coming, and, you know, more Conjuring films, and Annabelle, and other Insidious films, like, the jump scare thing is already getting kind of tiresome by 2015. This film actually has some creepy atmospheric moments in it. One in particular is when Quinn is, you know, has her leg hurt, and she's knocked off the bed, by the entity and then like the the demon kind of slowly closes the door and makes the room darker and like you know just climbs onto her back while she's on the ground like that is a freaking pretty creepy awesome moment so like I said Lee Wannell has some good direction awesome cinematography and definitely tried to create a vibe with this movie another thing is I love having Specs and Tucker in this film you know having Lin Shay is one thing but Specs and Tucker you know combined it's like you know their little crew they have a great chemistry and they're fun to see on screen but let's kind of get into the mix and negatives because yes sadly this is one that I'm not very high on in terms of insidious films this one takes a dip in the quality to me compared to the first two and let's get into one reason one main thing is that I feel like Lee Wannell and James Wan are two creators that kind of wrote themselves into a corner by killing Lin Shay in that first film. So they're like, we need to do a prequel film because she's obviously the most popular character in this film, even over, you know, Meth Mall, your crazy villainous demon character. She's even uh, more popular than that character you've created for this franchise. So they had to go back and answer questions or give us answers to questions that we really didn't have. Like, we really, we really didn't need to know how they got together or anything like that. Is it fun seeing Lin Shay, Specs, and Tucker together? Yes, of course it's fun to see them together. But did we need these answers to these questions? No, we really didn't have them. Another thing with this movie is I feel like this one, if you took the Insidious Chapter 3 name off of it, that this could be just its own thing, its own vibe, its own completely separate film. And I'm just, like I said, it, and the way I'm trying to describe it or explain it is it just doesn't have the same nature or vibe as those first two films. Be it that maybe Patrick Wilson and his family is not in it. Maybe that's why, because it's a completely different character, a completely different family. Maybe that's a reason. But I feel like this could be just some other kind of, you know, off-brand like thing, you know, that isn't even involved with Insidious. And like, that's the way it kind of comes across, you know what I mean? Even though we have Elise and some of the other reoccurring characters return in this film. Another thing is we have Dermot Maroney in here as the father. And this is after seeing Scream 6 and then re-watching this film recently, I've noticed that I think he overacts a lot. I don't think he's a bad actor, he's awful or anything like that. I think he's more suited for like live theater performances, like on stage, on theater. I think it would come across amazing, but I feel like Dermot Maroney, like 80% of the time he's overacting, he's just going for it too much. And I'm like, 
just dial it down like just dial it back like a tad bro because we don't really need all that and this for me like i said this is one where it, it kind of takes a dip in quality for me like i appreciate what lee winnell was going for and you can see that he had a creepy vibe going he has good cinematography a solid cast of characters that he's trying to build this film around but i just don't care at, at the end of the day like this is just a film that i don't care about like i feel like you could take this out of the insidious franchise just erase it and it wouldn't mean anything and like it would just it wouldn't bother anybody it wouldn't erase take away from it and it wouldn't you know add to it like that's what i mean this is just one that i want to forget that i don't really enjoy that much insidious chapter three so yeah for me in terms of the rating in my book insidious chapter three is going to get a five out of ten this is just an average film for me mainly because the reason it gets that bump in the five is because i really respect lee one l I respect Lin Shay's performance and what they were trying to go for, but in the end, at the end of the day, this film just falls flat for me and is one that I'm left more disappointed with than ex like excited with or wanting to return to. And that's a heavy thing with me in terms of like, you know, I'm big on atmosphere, I'm big on rewatchability and having fun with my films, and this film doesn't really do any of those things for me. The atmosphere is just here and there. There are some parts where it's really strong. I don't find this film very rewatchable and I don't have really a lot of fun with this film. So it's it's just, yeah, one that is just kind of very low on the totem pole in terms of Insidious films. But yes, next we're gonna be on to Insidious, The Last Key. And we also have some Scooby-Doo videos coming to the channel as well. So that means, you know what? You gotta be liked, subscribed, and notify all that kind of stuff to the channel, all that jazz, because that's what helps out the channel and everything. And like I said, it greatly appreciate it for me being, you know, that helps out the algorithm. It helps promote my videos. And like I said, I love talking to you guys in the comments. So don't be afraid to hit me up in the comments because these are just my thoughts, my opinions on Insidious Chapter 3. And pretty soon, like I said, we're going to be, after reviewing them all, on to the last key. On to the red door. Then the ranking of all the Insidious films. And you got to be along for the ride so you can share your list when we get down to the ranking video. Because I want to talk to you all about it. We're all different. We all have different opinions. That's some of the best things about us. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.